H60 liquid CPU cooler. The H60 has been one of our best-selling coolers for years, and we made it even better. The Hydra Series H60 features a 120 millimeter radiator, which will fit in just about any case that has a 120 millimeter rear fan mount, mid-tower ATX, micro ATX, or full-tower ATX. The H60 is a Hydra Series cooler, which means it uses liquid to cool the CPU instead of air or copper or other materials. What are the benefits of that? Well, for one, it can be quieter and smaller form factor to get the same cooling performance you can out of three pounds of copper or aluminum that would take up a ton of space inside your case and impede airflow. The improved pump head has a new cold plate that improves performance significantly over any 120mm cooler we've ever launched. And it looks cooler too. The white LED backlit logo adds a touch of flair to any build. The Hydra Series H60 is compatible with all modern Intel and AMD sockets and installation is completely tool free. It's easier than ever, you'll be done in minutes. The Hydra Series H60 comes with an SP120 PWM fan, which ranges from 600 RPM all the way up to 1700 RPM. So whether you want maximum performance or minimum noise, you can choose that through PWM control. The improved copper cold plate and the higher density radiator team up for the best performance we've ever offered in a 120 millimeter radiator. The new version of the H60 is our coolest, quietest, and best performing 120 millimeter radiator cooler ever. And it looks cooler too. For more information, head on over to Corsair.com. Today, I'll actually show you our brand new AI cooler from Thermaltech, which is our revised Water 3.0 AIGB cooler. So let's have a look. So today we've actually got the Water 3.0 360 edition. So it has three 120 mil pure AIGB fans. So these are actually specifically down to be static pressure. So what that means essentially in English is that they pull in air from outside the case through thinner gaps and actually draw it through the radiator itself, cooling the liquid inside. So it's actually much more efficient in those tighter, smaller chassis. We've redesigned the Water 3.0 this time around. So for the ARGB edition, we've gone for a much slimmer radiator design, allowing you to fit into more tighter spaced cases, essentially giving you more options in terms of which case variant you have personally. For the tubing, we've actually opted for a higher quality rubber this time around, allowing for much added flex and bending. So when you're filling it around those tight corners and in installation, you won't have any issues or worries in terms of punctures, leaks, or anything like that. We've gone ahead and pre-applied the thermal paste to the actual water block as well, meaning you won't have to worry about adding too much or too little thermal paste into the actual copper head itself. So you'll have full optimization when it comes to actual cooling. Each water 3.0 includes brackets that are compatible with both AMD and Intel supporting all the way up to AM4 for AMD and LGA 2066 for Intel. For the top of the water block itself, we redesigned the water block to show the modern Thermaltech logo that you guys seem to love, as well as adding an RGB element to the water block so you can actually control the lighting and the lighting effects as well, which is pretty neat. So it wouldn't be a product from us if we didn't include some sweet RGB lighting. With the Water 3.0, we've included some five volt headers on each of the three fans that plug directly into your motherboard. This allows you to use your own motherboard's proprietary software to control all the lighting effects and colors that the fans provide. However, if your motherboard isn't compatible with five volt headers, don't worry, we've included an ARGB controller allowing you to make the same adjustments as the software does.
Hey guys, Tony from Thermaltake here, and today we're going to be going over the installation for a brand new Flow360 AIO. For this video, we're going to be installing it in an Intel 1151 motherboard, as well as an AMD AM4 motherboard as well. So let's go ahead and open up the box and see what's inside. Okay, so included inside the packaging, we have our t Intel 2011 standoffs, our AMD standoffs, Intel 1150 standoffs, thumb screws, fan screws, radiator screws. We also have our AM4 standoffs, our retention clip, back plate with included pads, our general AMD bracket, and our Intel bracket as well. Just to round off the RGB Vive, the flow also comes included with three of our 120 millimeter ring plus fans, controller, and included cables as well. And finally, we have the cooler itself, consisting of the cooling block as well as the radiator. So first, we're going to go ahead and start off with just getting the fans mounted onto the radiator itself. For this, it's pretty straightforward, but it's also a very good time to figure out how you want to orient your fans and take care of cable management. For instance, on this installation, we ended up going with a pull configuration as it would allow us to view the fans a little bit more from the inside of the case and also gave us a good opportunity to tuck some cables behind some screws just to make cable management easier down the road. Okay, now that our fans are taken care of, time for the mounting hardware. To start out with, we'll be grabbing our two rubber pads and attaching that to the back plate itself. Now, in general, it's a little bit nicer to go ahead and put the back plate on the board before installing it in the case. However, since our motherboard is already pre-installed in the case, this is going to be a little bit more similar to what you would see with an upgrade. Now, to save some time and make things easier, we went ahead and installed on the back plate and secured it using the standoffs just so that we wouldn't have to revisit that later when we were installing on the cooling block itself. So now it's time to go ahead and get that radiator mounted. This is actually one of the reasons why we chose the View 21 as it supports a front mounted 360 millimeter radiator. Mounting the block for the flow is pretty straightforward and simple as all you'll need to do is line up the brackets for the pump with the standoffs themselves and then just go ahead and secure it with the provided four thumb screws. And since we had a chance to show you guys the fan controller before installing it, we thought this would be a good opportunity to show you some of the connections. Right here we have our Molex power. It's pretty straightforward. Next we have our USB controller. Now this is actually going to be attaching to a motherboard header and then straight to the controller itself. Then we have our fan headers. These are pretty funny as they look like USB 2.0s and they'll just be connecting into the controller just like that. And we have five available ports as well. Now mounting a cooler onto AMD's new AM4 socket is actually very reminiscent of Intel's 2011 socket, with the only major difference being that you'll be removing these two top mounting brackets, and then just going ahead and securing your standoffs, followed by the cooler itself. Okay, so now that we have our software open, we can go ahead and take a little bit of a better look. Now, first thing that you can notice is that there are four, I'm sorry, five panels open. Uh, that is to correspond with each of the ports off of the controller. And let's take a look over here. You'll notice that the number four is actually set as if there's an error. Now, this is because by default, it's set to the ring plus fans. So we'll need to go ahead and switch that over to the flow. Once we do that, we can go ahead and see all the different controls for the pump. 
and let's go ahead and move back. So now, since we're using the 360, uh, there are four of these panels being used currently. However, if you're running the 240 or the 280, you'll actually have two leftover ports so you can hook up even some more Ring Plus fans. Now, to begin with, we have our fan control. Uh, it'll have a reporting for the RPM readouts of the fans. Uh, you can actually change this individually or among the whole set. Uh, there's a few different values such as performance for getting those cooler temperatures if you don't care about noise. And then silent just to go ahead and keep the rig silent that way it's not bothering you. Nice part about this is you can actually deselect PWM and then adjust the values on their own. Let's see here, but for this instruction we'll go ahead and leave it as silent PWM. After that we have our mode section which we'll get into in just a little bit and then LED brightness and some color settings. Now what's actually kind of cool about these color settings is if you're trying to get a specific color and you don't want to use the color wheel, you can actually go ahead and input manual values. Right here, I actually already have it set up to show for blue. So let's go ahead and put that in. We'll deselect the LEDs that we just changed and let's change a couple more really quick. Let's go ahead and make this red. So knowing that 255 is the max, we can make red. 255, everything else zero, punch that in, and as you can see, those LED values there have changed over to red. And we'll do just one last one. And let's make it green, RGB, why not? Okay, and there we go, red, green, and blue. So enough with this, let's go ahead and take a better look at some of the different modes that we have available and actually two new modes that we have as well. Okay, so we actually have a total of 12 modes for the Ring Plus software. However, for today's tutorial, we'll only be covering about two as those are the newest additions to the family. If you want some more info on the other 10 modes, go ahead and check out the link in the description for a video Mike did actually covering the Ring Plus fans and the software as well. So to begin with, uh, this is actually one of the new modes that I found really cool and it's thermal mode. It's gonna go ahead and change color corresponding as to how the temperature readouts are in your system, moving from blue for pretty cool to green at a good running status and red, which normally indicates danger, meaning your temperatures are pulling up a little bit higher than they should. I've generally yet to see red, uh, so we'll kind of watch the transition from blue to green. Now to go ahead and put some load on the system, we're just going to go ahead and open up a benchmark really quick. And as you can see almost immediately, just from a quick jump, the system goes ahead and changes color. And we'll just go ahead and let this run for a little bit and see if we get some more color variation. it really quick so we can watch watch the system switch back down to blue and notice now that the CPU does not have any load anymore just went ahead and temperatures returned back to normal and LEDs readjusted to the coolest color next up is cross mode for this we went with a cool little blue purple and white theme uh, just to go ahead and show off a little bit more for what it can do. So as you can see the two light bands kind of move back and forth along the sides meeting each other and bouncing back each way. Uh, this is pretty customizable. You can change any LED you see fit uh, to any other colors you might like. So let's see here. Let's turn some of these purples over to red. Uh, what else is... We'll go with... So yellow, because why not? And then we'll mirror that on the other side as well. And there we go. Let's just save the settings. Now we're all set. 
Now just do remember that if you don't save the settings and you restart your computer, you will unfortunately have to restart over, so that is a pretty important thing to remember. Uh, if you do have a few different settings that you like, you actually have about five different profiles that you can interchange between this. Hey guys, George here from Corsair. This is the Hydra Series Pro family of liquid coolers. They're better looking and quieter than any of our other coolers have ever been and they're 100% Intel Coffee Lake and AMD Ryzen compatible. The Hydra Series Pro has better lighting than any of our previous coolers. The aluminum bezel has a nice bead blasted finish and feels substantial when you touch it. And even the radiators have been redesigned with a premium aluminum inlay for the logo treatment. But by far the biggest improvement is the reduction in noise levels. By using the ML Series fans, which have a magnetic levitation bearing to prevent friction, you get way quieter airflow operation at all RPM ranges. And for the first time in Corsair Link, you now have a zero RPM mode for our Hydra Series coolers. These coolers are so efficient, they can cool without the fans even running on the radiators. So until you absolutely need them for CPU safety purposes, the fans won't even spin up. With Hydra Series Pro and Corsair Link, you can adjust and control fan speeds, but you can also adjust and control the RGB lighting, however you want. The two models in front of me right here are the H-150i Pro, which is a 280mm system with 140mm fans, and the H-150i Pro, which is, for the first time for Corsair, a 360mm radiator with three 120mm fans. The Hydra Series Pro is Corsair's quietest and best looking line of hydro coolers ever. You guys should check out Corsair.com for more detailed information. Maybe you can add one to the cart and put it in your next build.